Hey kids, it's Mr. Mason, and we're back again with another lesson from our Bible. So last week we talked about um, Ezra and how he read the Word of God to all of the people in Jerusalem after a really long time of them not hearing it, and they were just so happy to finally hear from God's Word and be able to follow His laws once again. Um, this story today takes place years and years afterwards. Now, after Ezra had read the Bible to them and they started following the Word of God again, um, they were living Christian lives and living the way God wanted them to, but more and more time went on and they just didn't hear anything from God. And they still had the Bible just like we do, but they didn't hear directly from God like they're used to. Um, and God wasn't giving them direct blessings or anything like that. He wasn't doing any big things to show that he was there. And they started to doubt whether he was there or not. And they started to think, maybe it's not worth it to sacrifice all of these really good animals to God. Why can't we just sacrifice the kind of sickly ones instead? Um, so let's go ahead and dive into our story and I'll show you exactly what happens today. So the Jewish people had returned to the promised land and they were ready for God to bless them. The people waited, but nothing happened. Sometimes their lives were hard, and they wondered if God really loved them. The people became lazy in how they worshipped God. God loved his people still, and he wanted them to be holy. He wanted them to obey him completely. So God sent a message to his people through a prophet, Malachi. God's message told the people about their sins and called them to turn back to him. The priests disobeyed God. They were supposed to lead the people in worship, but instead... A but instead of offering God the best animals to sacrifice, the priest offered animals that were stolen, lame, or sick. God said, I am not pleased. I will not accept these offerings. God also said to the priests, it's your job to help the people follow me. They took you, they took you for instruction. They looked to you for instruction, but you have turned them away from me. You taught them the wrong things. God warned the people that a day of judgment is coming. God will punish, the, punish sin and reward righteousness. God said, I am going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. The messenger will have a very important job, to get the people ready for God's promised Messiah. Next, God talked about some of the wrong things the people were doing. You're robbing me, he said. The people were not offering God a share of their wealth. Um, we talked about tithe and how God, God asked for 10% of what we make because that's... Uh, what ever in his, in his, sorry um, really everything is, belongs to God but God only asked for 10 percent so that he we show that he is Lord over all and that these aren't our things to deal with he only asked for a small portion of what we want uh, but everything they had was a gift from God just like I said bring me a tenth of your wealth and test me, see if I will not give you even more, more than you can count. Some of these people were saying things about God that weren't true. It's useless to serve God, the people said. People who live however they want are better off than we are. But, the other, pe but other people did still honor God, and God noticed them. They will be mine, God said. I will have compassion on them. He said, a day, of, a day is coming when everyone who is wicked will be destroyed. But those who honor me will go out and playfully jump like calves, which is a funny image, you know, jumping around like little little horses and cows. Malachi told the people to be patient. God had not forgotten about them. Life wasn't easy, but if they served God and followed him, they would be happy on the day that God would they would be happy on the day when God would keep his promise to rescue his people. If you remember our memory verse from this week, it talks about how after a long time of suffering, God will restore you um, and bring you back to him. And even though God brought his people back to him after those 70 years in captivity, he still wanted to test them to see if they would continue to follow him. And after so many years, they started to fall away. I mean, we don't really hear directly from God like they did in the Old Testament. We just have his word. Um, but that wasn't enough for them. They wanted more. And so they just decided, no, we don't want to follow God if he's not going to give us things um, to show that he's here. And sometimes God's blessings are hidden from us. Sometimes he blesses us and we don't know it's a blessing. Sometimes it's just protecting us from bad things happening to us or um, things going a little bit better than they could have. 
And you know, um, Malachi in the story was a messenger from God. It was a prophet. That's what a prophet is. Uh, who told God's people to repent of their sins and go back to God. Um, this messenger that talks about in the story that has that is um, going to get the people ready for God's promised Messiah, that's going to be John the Baptist. So after this story, after Malachi told them, repent of your sins, don't go away from God, uh, there's a 400-year gap where really nothing happens um, from the Bible, we don't have any Bible stories from those 400 years. And after that 400 years is the New Testament. That's when John the Baptist comes up. That's when he starts preaching about God and how the Messiah is coming. And that's when Jesus is born and starts going around and telling the word of God. And, you know, there's a lot more stories to go from that. But uh, that's where our story is. This is the very end of the Old Testament. And we can see that... You know, God's trying to get his people ready for the Messiah to come and to save us, not only his people, but all people from our sins so that we can return to him one day. So moving on to our big picture question for this week, it's who is in control of everything? We've gone over this several times that God is in control of everything. And even in our story, when he's being silent and he's not really showing himself to his people or um, doing direct blessings to them, he's still there. He still has a plan. He still knows what he's doing, um, even when we don't and we don't understand why he won't just come down and show himself to us. God, God knows what will happen. God knows the bigger plan, bigger than any of us will ever know. And we just have to remember that he is always in control. And moving on to our memory verse, which is 1 Peter 5.10. After you have suffered a little while, God will himself restore you. Let's go ahead and say that together. 1 Peter 5.10. After you have suffered a little while, God himself will restore you. And we saw in our story that he restored the, the people of Jerusalem after those 70 years in captivity. He restored them with their temple and the wall around Jerusalem. But then he just stopped. He wanted to test them to see if they would be able to last on their own and um, continue to follow him even when he wasn't doing the big things that he was known for doing back then. And God's still there um, and he's going to restore them eventually, but he has to, they have to go through some suffering first. They have, they have to have some hard times in order to really understand why God is there and why God can save us from the bad things in our life. Let's go ahead and pray, and um, we'll focus on how God is in control of the situation, even when it seems like he's not, or when we don't really know what's going on. Um, let's go ahead and pray. God, thank you for today, and uh, thank you for letting us learn some lessons from your, your word, and um, thank you for seeing, thank you for letting us see you inside the Bible, and um, even though we can't hear from you directly, we still have your word to hear from, and um, we have leaders like Pastor Aaron and Pastor Jim that can show us what the Bible means when we don't understand it, God. And uh, I pray that you will help us to remember that you are here and you are in control um, no matter what's going on, no matter how bad things get, and uh, er eventually everything will turn out in your favor and it'll all go the way you want it to. In your name I pray. Amen. Thanks, kids, and we'll see you next time.